All right, welcome back again, and hopefully this episode will be nothing but finishing up the TKO. So I just got off the phone with Liberty Transmissions, uh, spoke with a tech near tech there named Blake, and uh, yeah, he gave me some insight of what's going on. So I'll bring you in here, and this is the shift cover assembly. It goes on our TKO and same thing with for 3550 Tremec. And he showed him the pictures of what was going on. Uh, we had the, uh, the double roll pin safety wire. I already pulled some safety wire out of this back one because I needed to, to take inspect and take a look. And I talked to him. So what he said was the reason the transmission is all bound up is exactly what I thought it was. It was because of the the 3 4 shift rail forked being out of position. So, what was happening was this was being held to the rear 50 thousandths, which lines up with this shift fork. And if I get you in here, turn on the light, and you can hopefully see inside this rear hole the hole for the metal shift rail is forward and out of orientation. So it's in orientation for the face plate is set up, which is what this is set for, but he said all I gotta do is knock this roll pin out up here, slide the fork forward and reinsert the roll pin back into this position in that hole. And uh, that's where it, where it wants to be and everything should work. So that's what I'm about to do. So. Now, he was explaining a couple different things to me uh, about the like, history of this transmission. They could, Liberty can actually go in their database and look up uh, your transmission if you've ever had it worked on by them, <laughs> except for this one. This is the first transmission he said he's ever run across that was earlier than their database. So I don't know how many years this transmission has been in United Kingdom. It may have been rebuilt multiple, multiple times, but the only indication of the original builder for this transmission is based on these numbers. So if you look at there, X2372. And if you look on the back of the 3-4 shift rail, X2432. Turns light out, you can see it better. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> yeah, we got X2372. So, the orientation is the best to see that at. So, that number corresponds to X. The first letter is who built the transmission in Liberty. So, there's different people. They're, they're first, if you see a number, like one's R or one's N or whatever, that corresponds to the person that built the transmission. And then 2372 is the order number that this transmission was built, like sequentially from the time that the employee started, I guess, until current date. And he said this number, well, X is an employee that was working there for over 30 years so far. And they have records going back to 1999, and this number predates their database. Since they, I don't know if they went to computerized records back then or what, but he said this is the first transmission he's ever run across that has was not in their database. So he had me out here looking for other numbers on different locations of the transmissions, and there's nothing. There's nothing on the whole entire tail shaft. I don't know if maybe the tail shaft was replaced. Who knows? I know the transmission has been blown up at least twice, if not three times. So it could have, who knows, what parts gone back into this thing. So, uh, needs a little bit of information. I thought it was interesting that they, they can track your stuff. But this is so early as well that they don't have two fork or two prong shift forks anymore. All they have is the, the one with three forks three pads on it he said uh, excuse me he said that 
Sometimes they put aluminum shift forks in here, which they uh, wholeheartedly do not like using because they break. A 3-4 shift fork is a lot more forgiving than the 1-2 shift fork. People get really aggressive with the 1-2 shift. So he said uh, the upgrade is to put the 3-padded shift fork in here, but uh, I don't see a real reason. So if it's not bent, I'm not going to worry about it right now. It's double roll pinned. It's better than the aluminum one, so we're just going to roll with it. I mean, a three padded version may be better, but for the miles this thing's ever going to do, I think we're going to be just fine. So, yeah, right, I'm going to get this roll pin knocked out, move it forward, and then I'm going to put it on the case. I'm just going to bolt it down with a few bolts. I'm going to bolt the tail shaft in with a few bolts and make sure we got some good positive shift action. thing I noticed when this thing is roll pin out I don't know if I can get you in to see I'll bring the light back on and hopefully the camera pick it up but this roll pin has had another roll pin smashed inside of it to make it tighter so it looks like they only got it in part way and then snapped it off and then they had the safety wire going in and through this thing to make it as tight as possible, I guess, in the aluminum fork. So I'm not gonna reuse this roll pin because it's been boogered up. So I just went through my, my stack of stuff and I dropped that one on the ground too. Uh, yeah. so, this is a nice roll pin, it's still opened up with the gap. I don't think it's ever been used. So we're gonna take this one and now that our uh, hole is repositioned, I'm going to struggle and hammer this new one in because they're usually pretty darn tight. So, all right. All right, our roll pin has been moved. It's in there pretty nice and tight. I'm happy about it. it should never go anywhere. You can see the offset now more toward the front. The uh, fork is pretty much flush with the shift rod and uh all right now we're gonna get it all back together just real quick for a mock-up and see how it goes i don't want to put all the uh the shifter gate mechanisms back in because then i gotta knock them back apart to get it out so proof of concept i am now able to take the uh the slip yoke and hold the input and turn all the internals of the transmission with only a little bit of modest friction all is all there is in there is a like the initial <clears throat> the assembly grease and stuff like that so it's a little bit firmer to turn over than if it was just a simple dryer even with some oil but definitely a mile miles better than what it was first time i tried putting it together so let's try to run through the gears here just by operating them individually i don't know how easy this is going to be Okay, that should be second. Oh yeah, there we go. Pull back, should be first. If I can get it, there it is. There's first. Back to neutral. Third should be pulling. There it is. There's third. There's fourth. Back to neutral. And then fifth is back toward me. This one. Go. This is not the right way to do this, but it's all I got. <laughs> Alright, reverse. Reverse should be easy. There we go. Yeah, we're in reverse. So, come on, 
fifth. I do it this way. That's way easier. All right, just gonna get the mechanical advantage on it. All right, there's fifth. All right, uh, all right, take it back apart, clean it, put the sealant on it, put it back together, and probably in less than an hour, this thing will be ready to go. And one thing I want to note about putting these transmissions together, Tremac specifies you use this stuff, this anaerobic gasket maker, to put uh, these transmissions back together with the seal your parting lines. And I've used it in the past, and I don't like this stuff. I don't know. This may work great when the transmission is brand new. All the mating surfaces are perfect. But I've tried this twice on two different transmissions and both times it has caused leaks. I wouldn't say it, it caused the leaks, but something hasn't been perfect and a leak happened in the transmission. So even if you go to like Handle Motorsports, if you buy one of the rebuild videos, which are decent videos to help, help you do everything I just did here at more, but he recommends using Permatex Ultra Black or Ultra Gray sealant. And I just have it in this little easy dispenser tube thingy. I saw my buddy had one of these years ago. I was like, man, that'd be awesome. Not to kill your wrists every time and get all your, I mean, our TV's getting kind of expensive anymore. So get everything you can out of a tube. And uh, cause the Ultra sealants by Permatex, you can tell when they're used because they set up firm. Uh, a lot of the the cheap silicones and stuff like that i mean even this is this isn't an, an ultra one but even this red rtvs or some generic ones i don't even have any because i don't keep them are really silicone and gooey and they move around like the the blue stuff you see people use on like when they replace water pumps or thermostat housings or something like that it's really gooey and it allows the hard parts to, to move still and uh the movement breeds leakage and seepage later so i love the permatex ultra line of their sealants because uh, they just set up nice and firm very plasticky so uh, that helps keep things tight sealed and in my opinion makes a lot better job and i've never had a problem with leaks all right finally back together and in a happy place all i gotta do is put the top covers on it i'm probably not going to seal them because I'll just write a little note on there that the lids aren't sealed just so it down the road if I ever decide to sell it you can pop the covers off and show them you know what's inside of it make sure it's not all lunch that's one of the great things about these transmissions anyway is you can actually get inside and look and see if the, the synchros are wiped out or teeth are broken or whatever you know because T5 you're just you're just trusting the guy selling them to you and they all said oh it came off it came out of a running car well that doesn't mean anything so, especially with T5s, it's the most, oh, probably the most difficult thing to buy, in my opinion, is a good used T5, because you're just, you're rolling the dice to whether you're going to get something decent or not. So with that, yeah, we're all back together. I don't have a shifter handle. i got an old vice grip just strapped to the top here. So uh, i got to push it to the side. You can see the shifter gate move over. So first gear. 
don't know. All nice. Second. Same. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Hard to turn, so I pump the camera because you got the overdrive in it. And then, I don't know if you can see this, the reverse lockout finger here. So you can't just go straight from fifth in the reverse. You gotta go back to neutral, then this pops back into position. Then you go into reverse. And, yep, so we're all good. So, one, two, three, four, five. And that'll get easier with time once things break in a little bit. So yeah, sweet success. Sorry. This is a, probably one of the more painful transmissions I've ever had to go through. But I've never converted one back from face plated back to street use. So, uh, alright. We're back in it. It was a zero dollar fix for the shifter. And uh, on we go to the next project. So, catch you guys again soon.